It is now time for member statements. I recognize the member for Beaches, East York. Mr. Speaker, in June alone, two nooses were placed at the Michael Garin Hospital construction site in Beaches, East York, intended for black workers to find them. Worse, one of those workers told me that nooses and swastikas are a common occurrence on work sites and that everybody knows it. Last week, too, alumni and current students at Notre Dame High School, also in the riding, spoke out about systemic anti-black racism at the school that they say continues to go unaddressed despite repeated complaints. And last week, I spoke with a black constituent who told me that police had refused to charge the white men who attacked and threatened to kill him and soccer kicked his girlfriend in the head, resulting in her hospitalization and a concussion. Each of these are instances of serious, systemic anti-black racism toxic workplaces, a poisoned education system, yet another instance of police not protecting black people. But the Ministry of Labour refused to participate in a forum on workplace hate last week, and the Premier, Premier said in June that deep systemic racism doesn't exist in Ontario. Maybe that's why he has allowed Ontario's anti-racism strategy to lapse, why he gutted the anti-racism directorate, why he said he does not support redistributing funds away from overblown police budgets towards housing, mental health supports, youth opportunities, or clean drinking water in First Nations communities, why he's reinstituted God Save the Queen at Queen's Park. Everybody deserves to feel safe in Ontario. The Premier and his government need to do better. We need a plan. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Don Valley North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have had the great pleasure of hosting many successful consultations with a variety of engaged constituents from my riding of Don Valley North during the pandemic. They represent a good cross-section of interest in the restaurant and the real estate sectors, along with several revered faith leaders who my constituents turn to for comfort, kindness, and hope during these difficult times. All of them are committed to enhancing the lives of the people in our thriving community. Each of the discussions we had enlightened me about their contributions and concerns. Their enthusiasm inspired me as they each embraced the opportunity to participate and to learn how about how they can best serve and protect their patrons and parishioners. I feel humbled to have earned their trust as their representative in this legislature. I value their input and I count on these conversations to keep me informed and aware of the issues that matters to them. Speaker, getting to know them makes me feel confident for the future. As our great province reopens, that they will each continue to light the way with true Ontario spirit. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. <laughs> member statements, the member for Durham. Oshawa, I apologize. Oshawa. Thank you, Speaker. I have a letter. It is with the interest of the disabled community in mind that I am reaching out to you, even though, as a person with severe mental disabilities, it is extremely difficult for me to do so. Like many who suffer from severe disabilities, the basic functions of daily life are an immense challenge for me. Even the simplest actions of everyday life for a typical, typical Canadian are fraught with barriers and challenges, whether it's shopping, speaking on the phone, or even just getting out of bed. These challenges are made even greater by the needless cruelty and woeful insufficiency of the province's most fundamental program for disability support, ODSP. Despite facing far greater challenges than the typical person, I'm left to fend for myself with the inexcusably minuscule sum of $1,100 a month. In good times, this is nowhere near sufficient. In the time of COVID, it is downright punitive. I was naively optimistic to see the average person received $2,000 a month from the federal government, mistakenly believing that this was an acknowledgment that this amount of money was considered the absolute minimum for the most basic standard of living. As always, this has proven to not be the case. It has become obvious that Mr. Trudeau has no interest in providing even the most basic of support for the most vulnerable of the disabled community. Unfortunately, that means we are left at the mercy of the merciless Ford government. I ask that you don't let my voice and the voice of every disabled Ontarian suffering in extreme poverty due to the insufficient and punitive nature of ODSP and the complete lack of regard from the government fall silent. Please do not allow me and the millions of other disabled Ontarians to be forgotten. Thank you. Aaron Green. 
Thank you to the member for Oshawa. Member statements. The member for Hastings. Lennox and Anakin. Lennox, Lennox and Anakin. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. As we be in only the second July sitting of the 42nd Legislative Assembly in Ontario's history, it's worth noting the federal government is not sitting. But all of us in this government have a serious responsibility to govern during the, this unprecedented pandemic period because general operations of government cannot be brought to a standstill. Decisions need to be made, legislation passed, and democracy demands local and regional input. But in summer in Ontario, well, the summer's back as we can all read, see, and heal and feel. Like the summers we used to know, real literally, with Lake Ontario at normal levels, the heat at higher levels, and uh, farmers wishing for rain. A tip of the hat, though, to Hastings County. No new cases of COVID since May the 17th. This much, much greater increase in testing. And thanks also to the people of Lennox and Addington who have been sideswiped by an outbreak in their Kingston neighbor, forcing all to wear masks in stores. But the compliance had been amazing. A community truly caring about their community. And I'd like today to pay tribute to a volunteer-run Amherst radio station who passes the good word to so many as it seeks to upgrade its license to 40,800 watts so it can reach all of Loyalist Township on the mainland. I can assure you, we're with you. That's a message we all want to hear. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The member for Nickel Belt. Thank you, Speaker. And I would like to uh, read a letter I received from one of my constituents. It goes, I am a single parent family, economically independent with a full-time professional job. I parent two young children. Last week, we lost our licensed childcare. No room at the inn. The center has been forced to reduce its capacity due to Ontario's operating directive of reduced staff ratio and no new funding. Only six out of 10 families have childcare this summer. The remaining 40% of us are in desperate situation. My livelihood, my ability to pay rent, feed my family, invest in, invest in their future depends on having quality, dependable childcare. I was unable to work full-time for the last month as my children could not succeed in online school without my support at home. I need to return to working full-time. I am terrified for September. How am I, as a single parent, expected to work full-time without childcare for rotating school days? Where is the childcare plan? Where is the support for working parents? How are women like me able to participate in the labour force and remain economically self-sufficient without childcare? I implore you to turn your mind to restoring childcare. Families like mine are dependent on our government to fully support Ontario economic recovery. And there is no economic recovery without a she recovery. And there is no she recovery without childcare. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Lanark, Frontenac, Kingston. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, there's a growing contempt for our democracy transparency and accountability, and it's, it's expanding well beyond our government's own circle. Last week, I received an email from my public health unit informing me that they are providing direction to make face masks mandatory. The consultation was confidential, the participants undisclosed, the arguments and the evidence was not revealed. But a decision was made with the following justification, and I quote, a poll was conducted in Ottawa recently, and 91% of the public who responded agreed with mandatory mask use in indoor public spaces. I was floored. Public health policy is now being not being determined by evidence or science or data. And it beggars the question, Speaker, why are we paying healthcare professionals for advice and guidance? It would be much cheaper just to hire a pollster to make public health policy. It is clear both this government and their bureaucracy are not making decisions based on available data, but rather on what the polls are telling them. Like the COVID command table, unknown actors behind closed doors are making decisions on our future after reading the latest polls. It is now clear that COVID is evolving from a public health crisis into a public relations strategy.
Member statements. The member for Markham Unionville. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To begin, I hope my constituents of Markham Unionville had a safe and joyous Canada Day. On the back of my summer newsletter, I included a Canada flag for my constituents to cut out and display on their windows, fridge, and more, so that they can celebrate Canada Day at home. Mr. Speaker, since COVID-19 started, the health of people of Ontario has been our priority. Places of worship are gradually reopening in June 19. The writing of Markham Unionville entered stage two. Hair salons, restaurants, patios, museums, and more businesses has been patient and supportive, can now open their door for business. In the last couple of weeks, I had pleasure to tour and speak to local businesses, Old Fire Hall Confectionery, Main Street Dental Team, Unionville Arms Pub and Grill, Casa Victoria Fine Dining, and Fine Dining and more, to listen to how their businesses are adapting the new normal. I also had the opportunity to stop by senior and long-term care centres, Union Villa and Bethany Lodge, to meet with residents as a distance. From limiting stores' capacity to allow physical distancing, providing masks and gloves to employees and increasing sanitation, I want to thank businesses and care homes for following guidelines and protocols to ensure the health and safety of our community. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank all the residents of Markham Unionville for their collective efforts in helping our province to fight COVID-19. Their efforts and sacrifice do not unnoticed. Thank you. Thank you. The next member, the member for University Rosedale. Thank you, Speaker. I met Alexandra Colo and her daughter last summer. Alex's daughter has autism and has been on the wait list for Surrey Place since 2017. Surrey Place is in my writing and helps children and adults living with developmental disabilities, autism spectrum disorder, and visual impairments reach their full potential. In March, Alex was finally able to apply for interim funding for her family, but has continued to encounter delays. Her online application didn't work, and she was unable to reach anyone at the Ministry for support. After her application was finally submitted, the Ministry was unable to locate it. It has been nine weeks since Alex applied for funding support, and the Ministry still cannot tell her when or whether her application will be processed. It has been over a year since the Ford government announced it was revamping the autism program to reduce the backlog of the 23,000 kids who are on waiting lists for autism funding. This Ford government promised to create a better needs-based system, but it keeps delaying when that better needs-based system is going to happen. And now these families, because of COVID, these families are at breaking point. We cannot waste another day. Kids with disabilities in this province must receive the support they need to thrive today. Not in a year, not in three years, but today. Thank you. Member for Mississauga Malton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Protecting the health and safety of workers and the public is government's top priority, and that is why, Mr. Speaker, Ontario has taken decisive action to contain the spread of COVID-19. Last Friday, our government announced an exciting new initiative that will provide online training to promote safer workplaces across Ontario. On average, 37,000 people require this mandatory training every year, including the members from Mississauga Malton. This new online training will ensure Joint Health and Safety Committee members can stay up to date and address the safety and health concerns in their workplaces, including those related in COVID-19. The training will take place and will be provided in real time using video conferencing by qualified instructors who are approved by Ontario's Chief Prevention Officer. Mr. Speaker, there have been rapid changes during this global pandemic, and we want workers and employers to get the training on health and safety measures so that we can safely and gradually reopen Ontario's economy. By offering these online options, we can ensure workers still get that important information, but from the safety of their homes, making workplaces safer for everyone. Mr. Mr. Speaker, on behalf of Mrs. Saga Malton, I'd like to take a moment and thank Premier Ford and Minister Monty McNaughton, Minister of Labour, training and skill development for taking swift action and supporting our employees and employers. Together, let's stop the spread of COVID-19. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.
Member statements? Member for Barry Innisfil. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, today I would like to tell the legislature a tale of two cities, Barry and Kitchener. After years of research and development, O2 Canada from Kitchener partnered with Jomi Technical Services in Barrie to produce a game-changing piece of protective equipment that allows a person wearing the device to breathe easily while at the same time protecting the individual. While the word mask might come to mind, this personal protective equipment is actually a respirator device. To produce more respirators, Barry, uh, the Barry company Jomi retooled its space and hired more staff to make this more comfortable piece of equipment that's also environmentally friendly. As we see far too often right now, we see masks littered all over our communities and all over the ground. But O2 and Jomi have partnered to make this reusable mask that comes with a filter that can be replaced. Jomi was also able to show me uh, firsthand a new piece of manufacturing equipment they received just last week that's going to help them create more of this equipment. So I want to thank Jomi Technical Services for stepping up to the plate, partnering with O2 Canada to produce a life-saving and life-enhancing respirator. Thank you to Mike, Drew, and Peter for the tour of their retooled facility and all your hard work. This is an excellent example of the Ontario spirit and the power of working together. Thank you. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements. The member for B.